Perfect. Now I have your number. Thanks. Hey, I'm Robbie Kramer. You're listening to the Leverage Podcast, where we discuss using your social skills to hack dating, travel, finding your dream job, and becoming a complete man. Well, hello, guys. Here we are in a crossover episode. <laughs> crossover episode. That's the my first crossover episode, I think. The yeah, Leverage and, Podcast and uh, St. Robert Day Game Podcast. Yeah, and we're going to talk about the topic that I have been ta- covering a little bit on my podcast. And I, I've done an episode uh, when, when I did a, a YouTube live with Tusk and we chatted about this topic. And I think it's a topic that very many people who are exploring the dating world are, dating world are interested. Of course, there are guys who come and they just say, yeah, give me all the, all the chicks I can get, which is fine. I uh, like... I agree. That's kind of why I started. That's partially why I keep go- keep going and I'm not slowing down. <laughs> but there are a lot of guys that come to this world and they say, well, I haven't been doing too good with dating. And yeah, I want to play around. I want to see what works. But the end goal is I want to actually hire a higher quality women. I want to start a relationship. I want to start something more serious than just fucking everything that moves. And I... I I think we both agree that fucking everything that moves is very exciting and interesting, but it, it gets kind of like, you get it tired. Its, it's like travel. It's like you go to a new city and you're like, eh, okay, it's cute, but eh, whatever. Yeah. Especially if, if you're, you're fucking a ton of girls, but you feel like you're not fucking as high of quality as you can. See, see. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so wait, how long have you been? I don't know how we call this industry or this lifestyle, this seduc- seduction lifestyle or, or living because you have been in relationships for quite a while now. Wait, how, how long ago did your monogamous, lovely relationships with relationship with your lovely Ukrainian girlfriend started? That started uh, 14 months ago. Oh, it's more than a year. How did you celebrate? How did I celebrate? Yeah. I mean, uh, you had a one-year anniversary. I got engaged. <laughs> oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, congrats, dude. That's fucking amazing. That's Thanks, fucking man. dope. That's yeah. fucking dope. That's really, really cool. Now, now your content is going to take some, some, some interesting turns. And, and how, are you, how are you changing the way you work with people now that you are engaged? Or are you changing your content? Or were you already kind of moving into that direction? Content-wise. Well, everything's the same as far as how I work with guys, um, you know, cause they're kind of walking the same path. The only thing that's different is I guess I have a little bit more to share about when to get out of the game, when you could consider giving up the game, my journey, as far as, you know, all the different relationships, I've tried every sort of relationship under the sun, you know, open relationships, closed relationships, uh, swinging, uh, orgies, sex parties, uh, whatever you name it, I've tried it. And I've interviewed people on my podcast, porn stars, other sorts of crazy people that have tried kind of everything. And, um, you know, I think there's no right or wrong way. You just got you got to find something that works for you and your partner. And I think like now the only thing that works with me and my partner is monogamy. And we're, and I've, I've actually been really happy in that. And in the past I've had great relationships that were open and monogamy wouldn't have worked with that specific partner. So that anyone I think who says like, this is the way to go, or this is the only way is just, you know, like, yeah, just put those, take those blinders off, dude, you know? Yeah, exactly. But you know, that was, that was kind of what the content was a few years back. It was you, you, you went and you read selfish gene and, and you have, had learned that there is only one way because that's what, what that's what our genes say. Well, there is there is a reason why there is a there are big discussions between, for example, Richard Dawkins who wrote the selfish gene, and for example, he, he had crazy discussions with who was the guy? He had his meditation up, waking up. Sam Harris, I think they had a very yeah some serious discussions with Sam. I didn't listen to them, but I could see them be being in completely opposite camps and, and both being 
I think Sam Harris being a more rational dude in a way, like kind of open to discussion, open uh, to discussing different opinions. Uh, I think it could be a quality discussion, which I kind of haven't ever haven't ever listened to. Uh, and, and I've, I've never heard of the, what was the first book you mentioned? Selfish uh, Gene. Selfish Gene. I never. I've I've listened to a lot of Sam Harris stuff and done the Waking Up uh, app and the Fifty Day Course and all that stuff. Oh, I do. I still do that for like a year or more. In I did. I meditate with that almost every morning. Yeah, it's great. The only app that worked, man. Like nothing else worked. Like Headspace didn't work, and whatever else was there it didn't work. Waking I up did. was just like, oh my god. Yeah, it's amazing. Anyone listening, get grab that Waking Up app and do the fifty. It, it, it used to be fifty day. Now it's thirty day. I think. I have no idea. Of course, but yeah, it's solid. If <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, the um, yeah. So my content hasn't changed so much, um, but yeah. Still, okay. still helping guys do whatever they they want to do. <laughs> exactly. That's what I kind of like about your approach. You are looking. Uh, you're talking about more topics than just yeah, seven steps to get a chick in a bed. Mm. And and I think there is there is so much more to explore. And and with the quality of content in our industry in general, which is just ridiculously low, it's just the bar is so low that if you are not stupid, then. Your content is quality content, and, uh, and if, you, if if you can post anything more than an infield, well, where where your game is worse than my average student's game, then like <laughs> you're already pretty fucking good. <laughs> and you were you know, always I've talking getting, about. I, I've been getting a, a bunch of clients recently. A lot of them are referrals, but they specifically want to learn how to set up the kind of like Dan Blazarian lifestyle that I was living before. I got into my current relationship. Um, so that's something I've been talking about a lot and helping guys kind of do. Um, and that, that tends to be kind of an evolution I've seen for guys once they get good at day game and they want to kind of set up shop and in a certain location um, and maximize that. So definitely could, uh, you know, if, if yeah. we branch off and talk about that, we can talk about that. But what about you? What, what's what's? I don't. I think that's a whole fucking such a wide, interesting deep deep topic because we have covered the party lifestyle. But I think what you're talking is even more interesting because that's about living in one place and then kind of building up that. So how exactly do you do it? Especially if you don't want to set up a model house or anything like that, and you would prefer to live on your own because. I don't, I'm a very, kind of, I like my private space and, and I don't want anyone in my private space. I would never, could never, I would never want to live that lifestyle. And, but that's, that's definitely a topic I would be interested in, in talking about, especially now that I am looking for a few places in the world where I want to spend three months each year. And if you, if you think about taxes, you understand why I'm thinking like that and why I want to do that. <laughs> and I did spend three months this year in Ukraine, and now I'm going uh, to Colombia, and I want to go to some wonderful places in South America that almost no day gamers have ever been to. And actually, that's that's what I'm doing with with my. If you're like touching a, upon a content a little bit, that's that's one thing I want to do. I. I have my video series that I will finish putting out soon with all the day game theory that guys ever fucking need to like everything you need in a day game set, like everything is there explained in the super kind of concrete packed condensed version. And I thought, ah, I don't want to do talking head videos anymore. And what I'm going to start doing, I'm going to start a vlog called dating off the beaten path. That's cool. Where I'll, where I'll go to places where like <laughs> day gamers don't go. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> everyone goes to like Playa del Carmen or Medellin or Kiev or, I don't know, like London or Warsaw, or Krakow. Like I'm, I'm going to go to places where people don't go. And most importantly, which is really interesting, this winter I'm spending my winter in places where people don't speak English. I don't that's, speak Spanish. Uh, I don't speak I mean, Spanish. That's, <laughs> that's what I did last summer. I did the Eastern Ukraine road trip. Um, yeah. And went to places where day gamers didn't go. And it was amazing. So. By the way, how, how did you do... In terms of, well, you were still single back then, right? Yeah, two summers ago. So summer of 2020. Yeah. yeah. So how did you do there in terms of getting laid in eastern part of Ukraine, which is, oh, no, eastern part was like 
the, the crazy part. Western part was the super traditional Christian part. Oh, Correct. okay. So, okay. But yeah, how did you do? Were you like just in broad terms? Were you getting good results there or? Yeah. Well, the, 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 I was only actually single on the, for the first two weeks of that trip because after two weeks, my, my now fiance joined us and that's kind of how we got together. She was the uh, videographer, photographer, like content manager. And once she showed up, and that was kind of my plan was to have her come and then we would hook up and, but the first two weeks were, were a lot of fun. <laughs> um, and my buddy Igor, who I went with, um, he was single the whole time. And so I can talk about his results. He's, he's very picky. Um, but he did, you know, hook up with some really nice girls and, um, brought one of those girls with the, the last stop on our trip was Odessa. I think he met the one in Dnipro and then brought her to Odessa. She was, she was cool. Um, and then the first two trips or the first two weeks, um, you know, we both did, did pretty well. <laughs> Some notches on the bedpost for both of us. So it was, Very nice. yeah, you know, like the, uh, it was a cool experience because we were both very, like, you know, good at it and we're on the same page and we were only spending like three to four days in each city. So we didn't have a ton of time to really operate, but still worked out. So, so what I hear is in your voice, what I hear is it was nice. Could have been even better if, if you had more time. This is kind of... For sure. Yeah, yeah, I, know, I, I know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, Ukraine is kind of like that. That like, But you, you can find plenty of adventurous and, and beautiful and crazy girls and if you really know what you're doing but you have to know I, I call this like the price of entry let's say you go to a place like Poland and we should soon get to the topic of relationships <laughs> yeah. gonna, but finally catching up is, is a good thing to do mm -hmm. uh, especially for guys that have heard us before I think it's an interesting uh, so and, and the price of entry um, so let's say you go to Poland the, or like Prague the price of entry or like the level of game you need to get laid there is fairly low. Like you don't need anything crazy. But, and let's say you go to a place like maybe Ukraine, maybe, maybe some places in South America where the price of entry or the level of game necessary to get laid is pretty high. So most guys would go to these places with some of the hottest girls in the world and, and they would go there and keep banging their head against the wall and not getting any results just because the price of entry is really high. But the thing is, once you're in, <laughs> right, you're in like nowhere else in the world. I did in Ukraine better than I have been doing in almost any place in the world, apart from Riga, where I learned day game. But actually, I, yeah, I did like it was just crazy. But the bad thing about these places with lower price of entry is once you get there and you start getting results, well, the thing is, even if your game is much higher than the price of entry, from my experience and from what I've seen from other guys, it doesn't mean you get that like amazingly better, like much better results. You mm -hmm. kind of stay at like you you get better results than someone else who has worse game, but but you you don't kind of get the hottest girls in a city. Whereas in places with high price of entry, like Ukraine and in other places, if you're in, you're in, and that's just unbelievable that the, the stuff that, that you can get done there is just beautiful. Yeah. So that's you, that's you a good mentioned... way to put it. Um, and, and it's true. It's like guys think they can come to Ukraine with no game and fuck hot chicks. Good luck. Not gonna about it. But yeah. that's, and, and that's again, as we, as we spoke before we started the recording, that's the reason why I don't talk about where I go, the cities where I go. Cause uh, most guys, and, and this we can talk about this publicly, because uh, we're not naming any cities. Because most guys, unless they're really good, they will go to a city and they will not get any results. And not even that, but they will keep approaching and they get blowouts and bad results and they will not be able to understand. Is it because they're doing something wrong? Or is it because the city is just really hard for day game? And that can be very demoralizing and can kind of get you a little bit depressed and hate the city. Mm -hmm. So those guys would go to wonderful cities in Ukraine or in Belarusia or 
many other places, even in Europe, and, and they would not get results. But what would happen is in these small, lovely cities with these amazingly nice girls who are so lowly, if you know what you're doing, they would see this crazy swarm of day gamers coming in and opening everything that moves and some of them being uncalibrated and it would hurt the city. So I actually think the best day gamers I know don't talk too much about the cities where they go. They keep it to themselves. And, and if you are good and you travel and you've done your research and if they think you're a cool guy, they will very happily share those cities with you. But they won't be posting it on YouTube. And I think it's uh, just as we spoke before that many guys who choose this lifestyle, who choose to take control of their dating life, they, they want to kind of separate themselves from the herd, stop living like the society told they should live and, and stop, stop kind of doing what everyone else is doing. But then they learn, then they join these day game communities and, and they see, oh, like, I, I got to go to this city because that's where everyone goes and, and everyone goes there. And, and they start following this other herd. And they're like, did, did they, did anything change? No, it's a different herd. <laughs> it's still right. a herd. So I think the beauty of day game, once you, once you can get laid in all these standard cities that everyone knows about, the beauty become, becomes this pursuit of, was finding new city, just exploring where, where could I go? And you go to a city that you know, don't know anything about and you find out which part of the city to stay so someone wouldn't stab you. And, <laughs> and it's so beautiful. But anyways, let's talk about what you mentioned before, um, which is an inc- a very important topic. When do you think it is okay to start thinking about chilling out, saying, okay, enough, left and right, left and right. So what, where do you think is that? Um, in terms of like getting into a relationship or just in terms of like having less casual sex? Um, I don't know. I think, a well, question. yeah, for me, I was, um, I was kind of living that Dan Blazarian type of lifestyle from, I would say 2018 until, you know, mid 2020. So probably like two years about. Um, And it was kind of towards like the tail end of that when I started experiencing less of a sort of like return on new girls I was hooking up with in terms of like happiness. Right. Like I'd hook up with a new girl, she'd be hot and I would be like just barely happier versus six months before that hook up with new girl. She was really hot. I was like stoked. Right. Um, So just like anything, you know, if you do something enough, it starts to lose its luster. You know, if you drive a Lamborghini and then a Ferrari and then a Bugatti and all that stuff, like after a while, it's just not that exciting driving sports cars anymore right <laughs> unless unless you fuck a robot i wanted to say drive a tesla ah. <laughs> there you go <laughs> so yeah just like anything um and i wanted to, you know i i just it, it could have been just my age um i'm 39 now so this was when i was like just turning 38 i you know i just feeling like, uh, you know, if I want to start a family or if I want to like chill out, I should probably, I kind of just got started feeling like I wanted to do that more. And I had checked off everything on the sexual bucket list many times over. Like there was nothing else that I was like, Ooh, I really want to do that. I I just done, I did all that stuff. So I really just wanted to meet a a cool girl. Um, but my, a a lot of guys come to me like, Oh, I just want to meet a cool girl. So like, what do I do about that? I'm like, well, actually, if you want to meet your highest quality companion, you need to be at your highest quality level for yourself, right? If you want a 10, you need to be your version of a 10. And my version of a 10 for me is when I was in that sort of lifestyle that I mentioned with, you know, just tons of access to to girls throwing events all the time, being the like hub of my social circle and having people just, you know, wanting access of me. Cause what would happen is I would throw an event and girls would bring their friends and 
when those girls came, I was immediately like the coolest guy at the party because I was hosting the event, right? So you get so much social proof and value by hosting events. So that's what I tell guys. Like if you want to, if you want the most options, you should get to the point where you're hosting events and women will come to those events and, and you'll be the man at those events. Right. Uh, but you can't, you can't just do that if you've never day gamed or if you, if you've never had a harem of girls, if you've never managed like to be successful with women, you can't skip to that part. Cause what you'll see then is you'll see these, these rich losers trying to do this and they don't get laid because they're in the friend zone. They don't know how to talk to the girls. They don't know how to deal with sexual tension or flirt or do any of the necessary things that you learn when you day game, when you go on dates, when you build a harem, like they, they never did that stuff. So now they're just the guy spending money trying to get laid and it's not working. So that's, uh, that was kind of like the point for me when I had just kind of, you know, done everything that I felt like I needed to do. I wasn't really getting the, the major, like, Oh, this is awesome. When I hooked up with a new girl, but I, you know, when my fiance, when I met my fiance, I was like, wow, this girl's fucking awesome. Like she's, she had all the qualities that I wanted and she didn't have a lot of the qualities that I had dated in the past that I really didn't like. Cause when you, when you're in that sort of party scene, you meet a lot of girls who just want to party and they might be hot and they might be fun and they might be awesome, but they're not the types that want to be in a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and, and even if they do, like, are they type, the type you want to be in a relationship with? Like, I, I wouldn't want to be in a relationship with a chick like that. Yeah. You just, you can't trust them or you never know when they're going to change their mind and just decide like, Oh, this is boring. I'm just going to go do something else. So, um, you know, I really felt like I could, transition out of that stage of my life and, and have like a more sort of chill day-to-day experience. And the cool thing is I still, I, I, because I'm coaching and I'm working with guys to do this, I still get like, to, I still kind of get to be in that lifestyle through them. So it's kind yeah. of fun. I get to live vicariously. Oh, yeah. So, and, um, and I love talking about this stuff. Of course, it's like my passion, um, and I love helping guys to like cultivate that lifestyle, set up the parties um, and do all the stuff that I used to do. It's just, I'm not, you know, fucking any of the girls at those events, which is, <laughs> which is better for them. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, um, you know, for me, like the being in a monogamous relationship, like, yeah, you don't have the excitement of the like, you know, new pussy, of course. Um and you, and it's like, that's no longer there, but because you're not hunting for that, there's a lot of extra time to do other shit. So yeah. I've, uh, I've, you know, I've gotten in much better shape. I've been doing a lot of the other things that I used to do kind of as like a younger guy before I got into game that I really love. Like I play ice hockey two or three days a week. I play tennis two or three days a week. Uh, play a lot of chess like I love sports and now I have all this time <laughs> to, to fucking do sports which I which I love which is probably boring for the guys listening because that's <laughs> you know, but... well, well listen we're, we're talking about moving from fucking into something more serious so actually I think a lot of guys are uh, there will be guys that will not get what we're talking about but this is this is for the guys that do get and uh, the yeah. ones that don't they've clicked away from this podcast a long time ago yeah good when point. we started talking about different cities in Ukraine and whatnot. And like, right. <laughs> it was still boring for them to wait through the long, boring intro. By the way, are you still in, uh, are you still in Kiev? Yeah, I'm in Kiev. And uh, my plan is, uh, you know, we're going through the, the K-1 visa process to, to be able so she can come to the U.S. Um, and what we'll probably do is spend like half the year there and half the year here moving forward. So you're going I to the U.S. for the winter? Exactly. Because okay. I, love, I love Kiev. I have a lot of business here with uh, my side business, which is real estate investing. And, you know, I love Ukraine. I love the lifestyle here. I just hate the winters. Like last winter, I was in Mexico. Um, yeah. And I would prefer to be in the U.S., of course. Um, but getting a Ukrainian girl a visa is basically impossible unless you marry her. <laughs> so... 
<laughs> oh, that's why you please don't say that's what you get in good engaged. <laughs> no, no, no. There were other that ways. Would have been so that, that would fuck up this episode so bad. <laughs> <laughs> No, okay, but I also nice. do get my Ukrainian uh, residency, which is nice. You do, but you get it, I think, don't you just have to... Oh, no, in, in Ukraine, it was a bit different, right? right? I'm, I'm thinking Serbia, where you just open a company and you're a resident, boom, like that. Well, that's the same thing here. That's how I oh, have Oh, you my... open a company and a resident? Oh, that's yeah, easy. basically. Yeah. yeah, I was looking into that and realized that Ukraine is so dirty, corruption-wise, that it's one place where I wouldn't want to kind of put any money in because I was thinking about where do I want to live and what do I want to do, and Ukraine was on a list, but it's so dirty. I mean, police selling drugs, and everyone knows about it. It's just crazy. It's, 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 it's like next, like, I feel, in a way, safer in, in some places in Mexico than I did in Ukraine. Really? Un- unbelievable. I, well, I, was, I was shocked at the mess that was going on in Ukraine. But that being said, it is like the edge of Europe. It is a place that has so much potential that I think it's just the potential that they have is incredible. And, and they will either stay at the same level for like 20 more years or they will catch up with Europe and, and become a pretty interesting country in, in, in maybe like five years time. Yeah. But yeah, I'm hoping the latter topic. happens. I, I'm hoping that too. I have some plans <laughs> for Ukraine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so you said several things. One was that the guys uh, would want to skip that part of learning the game. Even if you're talking, not talking this Dan Balzerian lifestyle, which you are, I think, the expert of. And, uh, but if you're talking either that or, or starting a relationship and they want to skip that, that learning day game part. And someone... I can hear already voices saying, yeah, but I met this really amazing girl from day game and I just started day game and I met her. I was like, why can't I have a relationship with her? Robbie, why? <laughs> well, <laughs> you're probably going to well, end up in a relationship without sex uh, where you're sleeping on the couch and hoping that, you know, she gives you the pussy on your birthday uh, you won't have the, 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 the status or the frame to deal with, you know, her moods and her femininity and, uh, she'll eventually cheat on you and leave you. That's why, because you never developed yourself into, you know, the man you could be. Truth bomb. <laughs> <laughs> so ask me how well, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> exactly, because that is a question many guys ask. And it's not because, and, and this is a misconception. This is, I, I publicly, openly say that the worst book to read if you want to be decent at game is Roll Automasi's book. Mm-hmm. I consider it the worst Rational book for day gamers. Yes, it's mm-hmm. uh, incredibly, incredibly terrible because it has created this manosphere of women hating of guys hating women because oh they're bitches trying to get something from me and snatch my frame yeah and 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 that's kind of what what happened because of the book and and the book itself is is like especially the, the beginning of a book is amazing there are so many good points but the one thing they are never credited to where he got those ideas from and they are all from different books you read The Selfish Gene and many other books. All of those ideas are from different books. He just put them in one book and then added a chapter on the end saying, hate them. So <laughs> I, I really hate the book. I, am not, like, I, 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 I rarely talk bad about anyone's content. And he's so much more popular than I ever will be in my life with Day Game. And, and, and I'm glad for that because I'm actually very happy to be a small player. I don't, I, I get to coach who I, like, I still get to coach who I want and where I want. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and I don't have to deal with all the negativity and drama that comes with it. But, but um, yeah, and, and why, I, why, I, why I'm saying this is because um, many guys hearing this, what you just described as, as the as kind of the, the result of starting a relationship with the first amazing girl, they'll, they'll say, yeah, they're trying to control the frame and, and, and the, the government, the government, if you get married, she gets half. The government is evil. It's all for the women. Fuck feminism. <laughs> and I'm even, I'm even sober during this stupid shit. <laughs> I like that rant. <laughs> and, and like, 
and 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 these guys they 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 believe that because they have read too much stuff online in my group chat we have exactly the same problem we have a few guys whose problem is thinking that girls are always trying to get something from them mm. and then it's like oh this girl sent me this text and she's she's probably snatching the frame but i'm, I'm just telling dude she sent you an amazing text. She initiated the conversation, asking questions about you. She likes you. <laughs> and chicks are really amazing. It's just that we are very different. Like men and women are very, very different. And, and our brains just work very, very differently. And the more you learn game, the more you, or I, I don't even like the term game, but, but the more, because, you know, I moved, I've removed some terms from my vocabulary intentionally. The more you learn about dating and the more women you game and you have these in the beginning, it's like one-time deals because, well, you're probably shitty in bed once you start. Mm -hmm. And then you get regulars and you get better in bed and then you get better in, in, in having regulars in spinning plates or however you want to call it. And you just develop understanding of, you learn that, oh, we're so different and they're not bad they're just thinking differently and and our job as men is to simply understand how women think and that's why i think it's super important to have that phase. just what you said you go through that phase of learning whether that's day game whether that's night game whether that is anything that guys like yeah there's different like i could never be a good night gamer i just i'm a boring dude and and you have to go through whichever whichever path you choose you have to go through that you have to get your kind of notches or whatever you want to want to get. Then once you understand that women are amazing and they're not trying to snatch your frame and arr, yeah, that's when I think you can start thinking about something more. But all of this being said, I'm a idiot who has never been too successful in relationships. So everyone should take this with a <laughs> very, very, very like a well, you're smart huge to amount not, of salt. You're smart to not get into them though. You know, like, you know what you're looking for. And that's... I'm actually looking for someone to travel with a little bit now. That would okay. be pretty dope. Like going somewhere for a month. And I'm, I'm going back to Mexico on... Uh, I, like, I'm in Barcelona right now. Mm -hmm. And on 19th, I'm going to Mexico. And I'm actually meeting a girl, a lovely girl. I did actually a podcast with uh, called What Girls Think About Day Game. Where on that podcast, we just got incredibly high. <laughs> and talked about game with the chick and recorded it. That's when we stopped talking with her. But uh, <laughs> and, and then she high on what weed? High on weed, yeah, definitely okay. on weed. Yeah, that's the, I I couldn't talk, have a quality conversation on anything else. You hear me on anything else? I'm just like <laughs> I'm just rambling. But um, and we had a very nice time in Mexico together over an extended, extended period of time. And I'm super happy to actually go back and, and meet her again. And it's kind of like this warm feeling to know that, oh, we had such a great time together. And now I'm going back and I'm going to meet her. And, it's, and yeah, I'm, I'm open to an experience where I travel with someone for a month just to see how it is. Preferably someone who is adventurous enough to join me on my day game adventures. To help you uh, meet other girls too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, at least open to the idea of having some adventure in the world together. I had a girlfriend like that. Um, she actually started out, she was a, a friend of my business partner at the time when I had a business partner. And she came to stay with us to write our uh, texting content, or not to, uh, fashion content. She is like an image consultant and, you know, a bottle service waitress at a, you know, hoity toity club in San Francisco. So she really understood like the whole dating scene and all that stuff. So she came down and we started hooking up and I was very much in a, I don't want a girlfriend. I certainly don't want a monogamous girlfriend sort of stage. I just want to have threesomes. And she was like, I want to have threesomes too. So she became my threesome partner. And then that quickly, obviously, because she was living with us transformed into a relationship and then we became swingers and did a whole lot of traveling around and picking up other girls um and it was uh it was a fa fantastic time the the trouble that i ran into was keeping it keeping it casual right because 
you know, if a girl likes you as time goes on, the more time you spend together, the more jealousy is going to happen. The, the more that uh, possessiveness is going to pop up. So if you were to, I would, I would suggest if you want to keep it casual with her to like, you know, maybe travel with her for a month and then don't see her for two months. And that time apart will be enough time to kind of reset things to the point where when you do see her, maybe two months or three months after that, you can kind of get back to that awesome energy that you had at the beginning of this trip coming up. But that's, you know, that that's the part that I feel like takes a lot of discipline because odds are if that goes really well, she's going to be that much more in love with you. And it's going to be that much more difficult to, to keep that boundary. Yeah. You know, know, for me, this idea about traveling with someone, it's sort of like a test drive. It's like, Hey, like, would I want to hang out with her more? Like, let's see how much I hate her in a month. Right. (laughs) Let's, let's (laughs) see how much we hate our habits. A lot can happen in a month though, you know? A lot can happen in a month, exactly. So you can yeah. get really annoyed by someone in a month, which is exactly what kind of this is. The idea is like, hey, let's see where mm-hmm. this goes. And, and if it goes to shit, you can kind of like, okay, here's your flight. Right. Here's your ticket. Fuck off. And Because I, I did see that in Ukraine. There was one chick I saw for a while. And then at the end, she just became super weird and super clingy. And well, it, it, there was some reason for that, which included me going to a... Uh, Ukrainian clinic after testing positive or some shit mm. and, and giving the shit to her, uh, promising <laughs> that I will not fuck other chicks without condom. And then she hears my story about how I was in Riga and gave that shit to fucking everyone in Riga. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, antibiotics are bad for your health. So <laughs> she got really, really pissed. Probably because I lied about not fucking other. Like, I, I didn't want to tell how many chicks I fucked without a condom while I was there. And, I learned my lesson. I'm, I'm very grateful, but, but yeah. And, but, but the story is about, she became from really fucking cool and nice. And we went to uh, Dnipro together and, and just kind of hanged out there. And at one point she became like this thing. I, I couldn't fucking stand anymore. Like, I don't, like she became like, like hostile, hostile. Mm-hmm. And I think you can learn that about the person in a month probably, and then see where that goes. Um, How do you, so, that's a, kind of an interesting thing to to s- circle back to, though, is that I want to be the no condom girl conversation. Um, I feel like that can be a slippery slope because I used to indulge in like, OK, like it's kind of easy to just agree to it and then just don't tell her you didn't use a condom. Um, <laughs> but then you run into the potential problem that, that you ran into, of course. Um, and uh, Towards the end of my like total slut phase, when girls would ask me that, I'm like, well, I can't promise that because one time I'm going to slip up and then I'm just going to keep lying about it. So, yeah. nope, I will not be using a condom as, as often as possible. <laughs> I can promise you that. <laughs> yes, and yes. I had girls say like, okay, then we're not going to sleep together anymore or we'll use a condom for now. But then they never follow through. So, yeah. I yeah. mean, even the chicks that tell that that's the responsibility on using the condom is on the guy. The girls are just too feminine. They will say you have to use a condom the first time you fuck them, and they will forget it about it the second time you fuck them. Yeah, always, <laughs> unless they are in medics. Like doctors are pretty fucking smart about this. And you're like, no, <laughs> put it on. <laughs> so. Um, about this period period of learning game, day game, Bilzerian lifestyle. Uh, how do you think when a guy, is there a measurable kind of thing that you believe guys have to go through before they start thinking about something more serious? Or do you think it's a fluid thing? Good question. I think it's, I think it's fluid. I, I do think the one thing that a guy needs to experience before committing or he should experience is, is a lifestyle with sex on demand from multiple women. Right. So have 
even if it's a month or two, uh, unless you're totally religious and this is just not your bag, which you wouldn't be listening to this podcast. Anyways, uh, <laughs> have an experience where you've got, you know, three girls that you can call at any time and have sex with and, and enjoy that or, you know, take that in, see how it feels. And most guys never experience that. They're always, they're always kind of thinking with their dick because they're thinking, how am I going to get laid next? Where, how am I going to eat? Right. And if you're in that sort of scarcity mindset, you don't fucking know what you want because you're just worried about how am I going to eat? Right. You're in survival mode when it comes to relationships. And so then you fuck hippos. Yeah. <laughs> well, not hippos, but someone that, you know, I call those the long shower, le- shower legs. <laughs> The what? <laughs> long shower lays it's when it. you sleep with a chick yeah. and then you take a long shower and contemplate your existence ah uh, <laughs> <pinata. laughs> it definitely it definitely happens okay so you think they should go through a period of having yeah i, I like that approach I, I like to think about this you know like number of uh, of plays that the guys should get from from game or whatnot mm-hmm. uh i i do think for me at least if someone asks me what's the minimum i think i would i used to say oh you gotta get like 100 lays like fuck that i i definitely don't say anything like that anymore i believed in that i my 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 beliefs have changed i think 30 is enough. Mm-hmm. You get your 30 lays. I mean, you know how pussy works. So yeah. kind of like you're good. Like you can start about thinking about it. But an interesting question is, do you think there is an upper limit that's too much? Very and good. I believe you know the feeling that I'm talking about. <laughs> um, yeah. So I was... I was turning down sex when right before I got into my relationship um, as a sort of almost like a meditation, you know, because I was like, there were a lot of girls that I knew I could fuck. And part of me wanted to just to get another notch at another, you know, another check mark or another girl to the list. Right. Um, But then I was like, I realized that fucking this girl would actually create um, both unhealthy things in my own head, right? Like I'm the type of guy who, you know, has to fuck a girl every night. Like it kind of got to the point where I needed to have a new girl in my bed every night and, or not a new girl, but like a different girl, or I needed to have a girl. I know. I know every night. Exactly. Otherwise, you're a piece of shit who can't get laid, and you're like run this dating coaching business. How the fuck you aren't fucking someone every night? <laughs> yeah, like it, it wasn't quite to that level. No, dude, dude. When I when was... I go to a new city, and I can't get laid in new city. Oh my god, it's so tough. Like on 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 my ego, and like right now I'm in Barcelona, mm-hmm. and I'm like a few days in. I was like, okay, this city for day game sucks. Mm-hmm. traffic hotness everything is there results zero but uh, like maybe it's because i'm not like i'm this tall bearded tattooed bald guy with with light skin and it might not be what people are into here that's my only explanation maybe someone with a different complexity would work better mm-hmm. but it's so hard for the ego right anyways i interrupted I think yours but yeah I, I never had a lot of success in barcelona either um but the, uh, you know, yeah, I, I was kind of to that point where I felt like I, I, something was missing if I didn't have a girl in my bed. And I also felt like that was sort of fucked up. And I was really enjoying sleeping alone. Like a couple of times I slept alone. I was like, wow, this is really nice. You know, and, and a couple of times I even jerked off and I was like, this is great. Cause I, I went better through, like, than a, chicks sometimes. Yeah. I went through a really long period where I, I didn't watch porn and I didn't jerk off cause I just didn't need to. Yeah. Like yeah. I was just, you know, had the real thing <laughs> as much as I wanted anytime, any place, whatever. Um, you know, I, I had like seven girls living with me, like one in one apartment and like four others and like a revolving 
the door of new ones coming in in an apartment like down the street. So, you know, like I could just go to my other apartment and go in any one of those bedrooms and fuck the girls. Like it was that sort of setup. Right. But I was like, no, I actually really like sleeping alone. And I don't know. I kind of felt like if if I did sleep with a girl that I wasn't really into, um, it was having like a negative impact on my psyche. And also I, I got, I started feeling bad because I, I, I was able to tell which girls would fall in love or which girls would get attached. I want to say fall in love because yeah. That's, yeah. Like, which girls would get attached. And I'm like, I know I can fuck this girl, but I also know she's going to get attached. And I know I'm not going to be interested in anything else than maybe like a, a fuck th- three months. Oh, you little, you little ethical motherfucker. I just started feeling bad. And I was like, this, yeah. you know, it's gonna, what am I going to get out of this? I'm going to fuck her and that'll be good. But she's, she's going to be like, you know, probably fucked up over me and it's not worth it for me. Like it's better for both of us if I don't. Yes. Yes. Um, 100%. I agree. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it was, there was some karma involved because for that exact girl, she's one who introduced me to my fiance. Like that was the first kind of thought. I was like, you know, I could fuck this girl. She wants to fuck. I'm not going to want to fuck her many more times after that. She's going to get attached because she's young and I can just tell because we had been friends. So I'm not going to fuck her. And I'm, you know, thank God I didn't because if I would have, then I would have never, you know, been with my girl. So, um, you know, I think that's something you can consider. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What, what I noticed is when you keep seeing girls and you have new and new and new and you've, you've seen so many girls that, you start recognizing like you, let's say you see a chick for a while and then you realize, Oh, like something definitely has happened to her in her life. Cause something's wrong in this way. And then you see another one and you see, Oh, like she's a bit like a bit like, I don't know, like whatever you want to call it this, like because of something that happened and then this girl and this girl, and I'm not talking about like, and many guys would say, oh, yeah, they can work some fucked up girls. I'm like, that's fucking bullshit. Like, and, and you would see all types, different types of girls. And you would see with, with, with all of them, after seeing them for a while, you would start seeing what's behind, what's the story behind how they behave. And, and I, I started seeing everyone as this, like, these, like, vehicles of emotional trauma and, and, and fucked up psyche. <laughs> Right. And at that moment, I realized it's it's not good anymore because I started seeing it too easy, too much, even before sleeping with the girl. Like I, I could see it very fast, and it, and it put me in this weird space where like, is are there normal people? Am I normal? Are you normal? Is anyone normal? Yeah, and it's like, whoa, 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 slow down, yeah. dude. Is everyone and, a narcissist? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Or just me. <laughs> Am I a narcissist? Am I an inverted <laughs> narcissist? Is 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 she bipolar? Does she have multiple personality disorder? Like I went through an interesting phase where I was diagnosing like everyone I met with some sort of personality disorder while trying to diagnose myself, um, <laughs> including like Asperger's and you know people on the spectrum of autism. Um, and when you go down that rabbit hole, or when you start listening to to podcasts or watching YouTubes on narcissists and, and inverted narcissists. It's pretty fascinating to, to get into all that psychology. And you realize that like the labels are usually just labels, you know, but kind of who you're hanging out with and what you're doing usually dictates like the people you're hanging around or sorry, dictates like the type of trauma people have or why they're in it. Like I noticed that, for me, like the reason why I wanted to kind of live this Dan Blazarian lifestyle that I was doing was mainly just I had validation issues as like a fat chubby kid in junior high that wasn't getting laid. And I was like, I want to be the fucking man. And like all of this fucking work was kind of to prove to that that chubby kid as a seventh grader who got rejected, like you're not that loser sort of thing. And I think a lot of women too, in like the party scene, like the burning man scene, um, that, you know, that like 
want all this attention and want all this validation is probably, you know, you hear that story so often. It's just like, you know, I was not confident or I had this, this thing happen to me as like a kid and I'm spending all this time as an adult trying to make up for that or change that. And, um, it's just kind of fascinating to, to, to look at those things and break it down from that angle. Um, it allows you to relate to people better too. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 a long time ago, maybe like more than a year ago, I had Mark Zola. You know, Mark, do you know him personally? I don't think so. Uh, the Naughty Nomad. Mm-mm. Oh, dude, I have to set you two up. Like, he's an amazing dude. He, he has the okay. biggest man, like, ma- male travel blog in the world. Really? If you, yeah. if you have Googled city name girls, his blog came up. Really? Interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. the Naughty Nomad, like the, the biggest male travel blog. Well, I've heard of Naughty Nomad. Okay. Yeah, that's really... Mark Zolo. That's Mark Zolo. Okay. That's his, like, his, his, his kind of pen name is, is Mark Zolo. And he has several really interesting books about his crazy travels through through Africa and Southeast Asia. That guy, they would, with friends, they would dress up. They wanted to do, like, dress up, and they couldn't decide between Mexicans and pirates. So they dressed up as Mexican pirates <laughs> and went out to party like crazy in crazy dangerous countries, in, in war zones and places like that. In places where you don't go out, they went dressed like Mexican pirates and tried to fuck local chicks. There are stories of, of suicide bombers and them, 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 they tr- some people try to kidnap them. And it's just incredible stories. And, and anyways, and I have this guy, I had him on my podcast like a year ago, Mark Zolo. And uh, we were talking about the same topic because he also had met a really cool girl and, and, and I think got engaged. And, and we also got to talk about, so how much is too much? And he kind of agreed that, yeah, after you get too many lays, you kind of start seeing that the world is a dark place. And, and for me, I think 100 lays was kind of the number where I started seeing the world differently in the darker, in darker undertones. Mm-hmm. So maybe like if anyone wants to figure out how much is too much, then I would say like, don't go over 100, like stop at 99. I think, yeah, the other thing that it led me to, it led me heavily into like the party scene, the drug scene, the, um, the, those sort of, as you mentioned, darker realities of life, you know, like if you want to be consistently fucking girls, the easiest way to do that is in like the party scene and by using recreational drugs, Coke, MDMA, um, and those girls are out to party, they're out to fuck you have to have a really high level of game because the guys that are competing are like also the most like guys with the most game, like, you know, um, and very few pickup artists or anything like that. Like those guys never like get in there. You're talking like club promoters. Um, by the way, have you ever thought about day game as a skill? If, if, if there was a skill that serial killer could acquire, the number one skill would be become a good day gamer. <laughs> Cause you can get same delays. You there can get was, a cheeky. There, you... there was a killer like that. I yeah. Think. That's, that's crazy. Cause I, I've, I've literally thought I, I coached students that were, uh, they had their mental things. Let's, let's put it like that. And, and I thought, damn, this guy like could legit be a serious, could become a serial killer. Like if he chose a different path in life, like mm-hmm. easy. I think he, became, he chose to become one of the best day gamers I, I know in the world. I, I think he's best. He's, he, he doesn't talk. Like, no one knows about him. He doesn't coach, doesn't talk to any, any other day gamers. If he goes to a city and sees one day gamer, he leaves the city. He's really? like that. And, and that guy is my most successful student. Uh, incredible game. Unbelievable mm-hmm. game. And I believe his game is better than, than almost, like, most coaches that I know, his game is better. In many ways, I, I really think he's better than, than me. Like, uh, I'm, I'm super proud as a teacher, as a coach. Like, I, I see his results. And, like, well, sometimes you get and- those people, like anyone who could be a serial killer, I would imagine, they have the ability to like, hyper-focus and like, execute on things, yes. right? 
like they're very detail oriented. This is just from my experience watching Dexter. Like that's my extent of serial killer knowledge, but it seems to be a pretty credible source. Um, you know, they're extremely detail oriented. They're focus driven um, and they, you know, they execute. So <laughs> literally execute. Uh, <laughs> That's probably why this, podcast. this guy's so good. Yeah, talking about <laughs> a bunch of crazy stuff in here. But the, the, the one other thing I think too is to kind of remember like why you got into game in the first place. Um, and maybe to think about like what was kind of that fantasy you had of an ideal life or an ideal relationship before you learned about game. And for me, um, I always had like, the, you know, I was lucky enough to be raised with like, you know, parents that were together, um, no divorces in the family and like an awesome, I had like an awesome childhood, you know, um, super lucky for that. And, and in the back of my mind, I always wanted to create that down the road for myself. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that I did it with like, you know, whatever my, my dream girl or my, you know, whoever I felt like I deserved to get, And I guess as time went by and I got more into game and I got more into like the party scene and all that sort of stuff, I kind of, I got so sucked into like, you know, hooking up and having these crazy wild sexual adventures um, that I kind of forgot about some of that stuff. But then as time went on, I was like, why am I doing any of this? Like I didn't get into game to like have orgies, you know, like I got into game to like find an awesome chick. So do I, am I really getting any happier from these orgies? And that, that's kind of when I started transitioning, I guess you could say. So that, I think that's a good question to ask yourself. Like, why'd you get in the game? Are you chasing this thing that you only want because it's just like that next level? Or is it something you actually want to ask yourself that? And ask yourself that question once you have shitload of plays and chicks you can call any time of the day. Yeah. Not before, not before. That's a, that's a big guy, I mean, mistake. And I've seen it. I've seen it with almost every client is, you know, they learn the skill of approaching day game, they meet a girl, they get in a relationship and, and then they quit. And then it's either three months later, six months later, a year later, they're like, fuck, why'd I do that? I'm like, I told you, you're going to do it. Don't do it. Like, you know, you haven't really learned the skill yet. You just, you know, you just got enough to, to, to get that, but like, then they go back. So if you're listening, I agree. And- with, I agree with one hundred percent because that's kind of wow. that's the reason I got into game. I just I I, I understood that the regular dating model, the, the regular view about views about dating aren't true, and I just said, well, this clearly doesn't work statistically. If you if you look at statistics about marriage and relationships, and the people that get divorced are the brave people that actually went through with it instead of stayed in a miserable relationship for the rest of their lives. And I said, well, this clearly doesn't work. I don't know what works, but I'm not the kind of person who is going to keep doing something that I know isn't working. I'm going to, I went on a journey to find, Hey, like, let's see what works. Who the fuck knows? And, and that's kind of how I ended up doing what I do. And, and I'm keeping, I, I keep exploring. I love to see that, that you, you have find your ways uh, and, and kind of, that you, I, I kind of like seeing that other basically guys kind of are exploring similar topics, and I think it's 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 a next level of of this industry, is because the, there's the previous level was just like fuck everything that moves and and end up being a crazy Nazi hating everyone, mm-hmm. uh, which <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah, I assume like let's not call names, but but like there are many names that have went into some taken some dark paths and, and become very weird people. And I, I just think that's because the day game or, or seduction world in general was pretty, it was amazing. It worked, but it was an unhealthy environment. That's why so many people, when they quit game, like some coaches that quit game, they, they don't want to be associated with game. They change their, they, they, they leave their pseudonym. I have been always open about my name. Like everyone kind of in my industry, at least everyone in my kind of circle in my community they know my name they know my surname i've never been secret i've never had secrets about this 
Uh, and, and that's why so many people, so many day gamers are not comfortable with having their face out during a podcast, during an interview, because yeah. they think they are part of this evil community, which if you have read too much uh, online forums, then yeah, you are, because you got to fuck bitches and blah, blah, blah. Yeah? I would guess it comes down to, because I've, I've also, you know, never gone by a pseudonym and been very public. And you said something earlier on the podcast about actually liking women and thinking they're awesome, which is what I've always felt like. And I can tell that you feel like that too. And oh, I've never felt like the need to hide any of this stuff or because like, I know that's how I feel. And I know that vibe or that message is going to be, <clears throat> that's going to come through, you know? And I've had, I've had women like, you know, find out that, you know, the guy that they're with was coached by me, but nothing ever, I've never had any backlash or anything bad happen from any woman finding yeah. out anything. Right. Cause, cause that's the, the platform where I'm standing on. Like, this is good for women because it's making guys better for women. Right. And I think the guys who do have the secrecy, I think they have a lot of issues with not liking women um, and wanting to, you know, wanting to kind of like get revenge on women or, or something like that is probably going on, I would guess. Definitely. Well, you are the expert on Denville Zorian lifestyle. So my listeners listening to or watching this stuff or listening to this, where, where do they go to find some resources you have put out on, on maybe moving towards this lifestyle, especially guys who have, have, who have some experience in, in game. Maybe you have some video that's, that's on this topic, or maybe there's a podcast episode they should listen to or some kind of sign up here and get this amazing PDF type of thing, or, or where, where should they go? Um, well, if you go to my site, innerconfidence.com, um, link in description, motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can find a lot of content on that. If, I mean, didn't we do a podcast? On we that? did, we did, we did, uh, how to set up party houses and I, I or like something like that. Mm-hmm. And it was on my podcast. I have no idea what's the episode number, but if they search Robbie Kramer in, on my podcast and my YouTube channel, Spotify or Apple podcast, they will find that episode. Definitely. I want to actually, yeah, because I did a few episodes about that and I'm realizing I don't know where they are totally. <laughs> Can you send little... me the links? I'll put them in the description on my podcast. Sure. Yeah, I did. I did another one with Trip Kramer from Trip Advice and, um, and I should probably do another one too. But the, um, yeah, there, there's a bunch of different content out that. Or, and I, I guess what I would, if someone really wants to do it, they should just, and they have the time um just kind of cherry pick the last out of the last like 20 or 30 podcasts on my show where I talk about some different topics about those things so okay. and likewise for you for guys that are really interested in day game and uh they want to learn from Saint Robert the day game priest himself how did you well, get the Saint Robert thing by the way I oh never that's asked- <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I used to go. So in Riga, there was this amazing craft beer bar where, where, where I would take all of my dicks. And uh, there was this church not far from, like, one block away, like, like literally, like, 150 meters away. That's, like, 150 yard, um, feet, whatever. 50, 50 meters away from the bar was this church. And on the dates, I would sometimes joke that, oh, yeah, like, I'm actually, like, a very nice guy. I'm a, I'm a good church boy. Every Sunday, I go to that yellow church. The church is yellow. And, and I, I go there, and I, I confess my sins. I'm, I'm, I'm a real nice church boy. My friends call me St. Robert. And it was a joke. And then I met Tom Torero. And Tom Torero, like, he talked about my I met him randomly on the street. And we talked about my game. And he just said, dude, like, your results are incredible. You have to fucking coach. Like you cannot not coach. And and I needed to start a website. And well, I called it Saint Robert dot blog. And <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah. So the guys who want to learn day game, uh, I would say the number one thing to get an idea about my approach to day game. And this is the the stuff that I put out that that the most loved stuff on my YouTube channel is you go to my YouTube channel Saint Robert Day Game. You go to playlists and you find a playlist called uh, Learn Day Game Faster Using Structured Natural Approach or just search on my channel Structured Natural Approach. It's a playlist where I explain the beginning of a set. 
And once you watch that, you will understand why when you stop girls, they will want to leave, why they say they got to go, they don't have time, why they blow you off. And, and you, you will understand perfectly why that's happening and what exactly you have to do in the beginning of a set to fix that. I, I think it's the best, best thing to do. Yeah, that's, that's super important. I'm going to check that out too. I've never seen that. So. <laughs> well, Robbie, Robbie, it's been, it's been a pleasure. I, I love chatting with you. I think this has been the best chat we've had. Uh, and well, let's do another one when you are in US and I'll be somewhere in South America and we'll come up with another topic to talk about. And thanks for Perfect. doing this double episode, this crossover. Yeah, man. I'm, see you I'm, soon. I'm... It was, it was super fun. I think we covered some good shit. So I hope you hope you guys like this. Leave a comment or do whatever the fuck you want to do and tell us we're ugly. Oh, by Ciao. the way, I got a hair transplant. Uh, How does it look? I, I thought <laughs> that that's why you are wearing a hat. I was pretty sure that that's why you're wearing a hat. My, um, it's going to start growing in soon. It's been like three months. So okay. So how good is it going to be when it's ready? Um, it, it should be like totally full. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. If not, I'm just going to I'm interested. I'm I'll, interested. I'll I'm interested. Like <laughs> I'm interested. Yeah, let's yeah. talk about the off the off the off the recording. Thanks for listening. If you want more, go to innerconfidence.com and don't forget to subscribe to this podcast for the latest episodes.